Hello everybody and welcome back to every animated movie of the year where we are all reset and starting over fresh for 2017. Now before we jump back in, here's a quick refresher of just how this series works. So instead of giving a movie a score, say a X out of 10 or a percentage or something, in this series we will be ranking each movie against one another on a giant list. So let's talk about what movies are fair game for review. So long as the film comes out in theaters in my area where I'm actually able to go and see it, at a sort of wide release capacity, I will be including the movie. I fudged things a little bit last year by including a Netflix release, but I'm keeping things real strict this year. Now yes, of course, I would love to include foreign films and online releases, but the line gets a bit too blurred that way, and I don't have the bandwidth to include all of those reviews anyway. But that's not to say I might not include a separate review of something that comes out that's really cool on the side, like I did last year with The Killing Joke. And speaking of Batman, today we saw the Lego Batman movie, of course a spin-off to the popular Lego movie, and heck, we're just gonna throw straight to the list today, usually we do that at the end, where the Lego Batman movie is the best animated movie of the year. And I know, you're super shocked, right? Of course, the list will grow and evolve as the year moves on, but for now, it is the sole entry and the best of the year by nature of that, I suppose. But speaking frankly, I don't think that this movie is going to hold the top spot for long. I see it's got a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a damn respectable score, but perhaps a little generous in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, the Lego Batman movie is a rock solid entry, but when compared to its predecessor, the Lego movie, I think there's a lot to be desired. So here's a snapshot of the plot in Lego Batman. Basically, we've got Batman living his awesome Batman life, kicking ass, taking names, and just generally being Batman. But he's all alone in his massive Batcave with no one to share his successes with. When new characters Barbara Gordon and Robin are introduced into his life, Bruce has to learn to put his lone wolf ways aside and work with others as a team. So one of my kind of more general hang-ups with the movie is really just a subjective taste thing. And it's a thing that I've had the same hang-up on for over a decade with the LEGO video games. I ask myself the question, but why is it LEGOs? The phenomenon of the LEGO video games is something that I've never really got into. But I think this is why the LEGO movie itself was so damn incredible. It's a LEGO movie about LEGOs. Could not work if the movie wasn't made in LEGOs. It addresses the ideas of creativity and expression, and even takes the meta world of LEGOs to the furthest extreme with its fantastic twist ending, where the whole thing is actually taking place in the human world, and a kid is just kind of trying to make some cool things with his dad's LEGO sets. This totally struck a chord with me because I used to have all of the Lego sets under the sun, the pirates, the knights, the space sets, but the second I was done building the thing with the instructions, I would tear it down immediately and start making some weird space castle with horses and drawbridges. Looking good, buddy. Anyway, my point is, I think the Lego Batman movie left a lot behind of what made the Lego movie so charming. The fact that this Batman movie is made in Legos doesn't really add anything. This could just be a CG animated, comedically skewed Batman universe movie and still function just the same way that it does. But then again, I am someone who's never really understood the appeal of the Lego video games, so maybe there's something that I'm missing. But also then again, I do kind of represent more of a general moviegoer who may also wonder, why is this movie made in Legos? But that said, it still was really funny. The Lego universe's propensity to be self-aware made for a lot of hilarious meta Batman jokes with references to other Batman films and had some fun laughs at the expense of the villains. Will Arnett, of course, as he was before, is incredible with his portrayal of Batman. He's absolutely perfect with that broody, too cool for school vibe, and it definitely makes Christian Bale's Batman voice seem a little bit sillier when looking back. I think personally there could have been a better pick for the Joker. I think Jim Carrey would have actually been really interesting, but Zach Galifianakis wasn't bad at all. One weird casting thing though that I noticed was that Eddie Izzard plays Voldemort in the movie when they already have Ray Fiennes on the payroll playing Alfred. I wonder if he was like contractually restricted from bringing back the character in any other sort of capacity or universe. Probably not, but it, it just seemed like a weird thing. I was also curious for anyone else who saw the movie trailers or the movie itself. 
Did you notice the huge visual change from the Lego movie? Years ago, after seeing the first film, I just simply assumed it was stop motion. It wasn't until the week after I saw it that I read an article explaining how it wasn't stop motion, and my mind was blown. There were just so many indications that it was stop motion, but all of that was meticulously crafted and purposefully added to sell the effect. Fingerprints and scuffs on the pieces, a strange choppy frame rate you'd normally attribute to stop motion, and every single thing in the universe was made of Legos. Lego water, Lego smoke, Lego clouds, etc. With Lego Batman, it's got a much more animated look. I'm not sure why this choice was made. I mean, it definitely looks more polished, but I don't think this visual style works quite as well. The water is now digital, smoke and explosions now look real like they belong in a human world. The pieces are all very slick and clean, albeit they do have cool textures and things like that, but they just look very fresh and clean. Certainly it doesn't look bad, but definitely a departure from the first film if you were partial to that style, which I really was. But I'm kind of nitpicking a lot, just because I really love the Lego movie so much and I think it's something so special, so I couldn't let the Batman movie off the hook so easily. Ultimately, you've got a really funny film that moves along at a super fast clip, allowing them to hit on many different jokes and set pieces. It's really impressive, and it's great to see all of your favorite DC heroes and villains taken a bit more lightly. And while I do think the character of Lego Batman works a bit better as a supporting sort of caricature Batman, I think they do a good job of fleshing him out in this movie as much as they could with this sort of flavor of Batman. So that is it for our first episode of 2017. You guys will have to let me know what you thought of the Lego Batman movie down in the comments. Now, as we move forward, I will be doing my level best to get these reviews out as close to the release dates of the films as I possibly can. Unfortunately, I don't get to go to early press screenings or anything like that. <clears throat> but for now, I will see you guys next time, right here on Every Animated Movie of the Year.